pissed. The idea of even being kind to those who have constantly wronged me alone makes me cringe. Like Denzel Crocker twitching, telling Timmy Turner to tell the truth that tiny twinkling fairies exist. I'd rather spit in a... I'm... Sorry. Just... Thinking about this makes me so... Heated. I have repeatedly defeated the angelic yet naive voice in my heart that tries to tell me to forgive. People can and do change. Well, no. I'm not entitled to forgive anyone. Not for what they did to me or even what they did to others. My mother's rapist escaped his trial because the judge was in denial of what he did. And this wicked man had the audacity to one night hear the words of the gospel and accept Christ. Now everyone thinks he's nice and fun, but I have not forgotten what he has done. And even with the sincerest of apologies, a big part of me could never let go of the tight grip I have around his throat. I mean, what about the victims? Bill Cosby should be thrown off a cliff for tossing pills into women's drinks for his own sexual gratification. Michael Jackson should be resurrected and flogged for the way he would allegedly jack sons off their innocence at such a young age. And what about Kobe? We already know he was a legend at ball, but do we not recall when he was accused of misusing his own pair? He may have a sick jumper, but have we considered the possibility of frustrated aggressive force when he shoots his shot and misses? And think about his misses. Sure, we don't know what really happened there, but it's enough to question his legacy. Even if it has been years. Imagine the countless nights of tears Caitlin Fibber has probably shed. And now he's dead. But we want to keep only all of the best parts of him alive? No. It's time we stop giving excuses to such people in our society because sobriety is only retained when we have detained our unhealthy habits. But let's also face the facts. Ain't nobody staying sober for long. They will always revert back. Giving second chances is a foolish deed because why do we need to see someone else harmed by an individual's second offense before we decide we should have refrained from giving them that opportunity to do it again? But then again, I think about the times I may have not deserved a second chance, but was given grace anyway. I did nothing as evil as many others I could mention, but still. I will admit that if not for those opportunities at redemption, no one would have been able to identify how true of a change I really could make, including myself. Perhaps a do-over is exactly what some people, not all, need to be even better than they were before. A chance to not be held to the mistakes of their past, but rather to look to the hope and change of their future. We are all human beings, meaning flaws and misdirection is to be expected occasionally or even daily. Some are judged more harshly than others, but we should never fail to look at our own shortcomings and acknowledge the many chances to get it right whenever the shame and the very chains we used to shackle others that we have now found wrapped around our own wrists with embarrassment was all we had left. Another thought just struck me. Perhaps. This could also be a reflection of my inability to forgive myself for the wrongs I've done. The struggle I have with grasping the slippery idea of also giving myself some slack could be the very struggle I have giving some back to others. Of course, there's a world of differences between those like R. Kelly and Ted Bundy versus those like Kevin Hart and Kanye West. And even then, that may not be the best. It might be controversial in thought, but the fact of the matter stands that maybe canceling an individual will not always produce the most effective results. Cancel culture is a modern cult. It's simply unproductive to allow offenders to go on with ignorance of the wrong they did, let alone to figure it out on their own with the possibility of misinterpreting the events that took place. We should make more time for face-to-face discussion. It is imperative that they know exactly what they did and why it was wrong. And how would they know this if we do not sit with them and not only understand their intentions, but help them reconfigure and calibrate them properly, if willing? Maybe. 
Maybe in my eagerness to express my outrage, I had the tendency to lose the message of why I was upset to begin with. And although my emotions hold validity, failing to communicate them properly would only leave me infinitely misunderstood. And that's not helping anyone. <sighs> this spiel didn't go the way I expected. I started off disrespecting those who I believe have disrespected others and I had refused to entertain the notion of showing any mercy. But I think, I think it's time we consider canceling cancel culture and rather catapult a considerably compassionate culture instead. A society where we have hope in the redemption of our people and the patience to track their lines of thinking to where it began to go wayward and help readjust them to a safer set. This isn't to say it'll be easy, but, well, when has the intricacies of humanity and morality ever been solved with a simple tinker? I rest my case.